The TLDR of this movie is that the Straw Hats are minding their own business and find a guy drowning and they save him. Except he turns out to hate all pirates and so he tries to beat everyone up. But also in his quest to destroy pirates, he's gonna cause a lot of property damage. What has stuck with me after watching Film Z, more than anything else, is the ambiance. You have high intensity moments, you have fun moments, you have very peaceful moments where it's giving you so much time to experience the... Well, the, the ambiance. Ambience? How do you say that word? The mood. The vibes. You get what I mean. In its near two hour runtime, it has enough time to breathe and showcase exactly what it wants to with all of the beats. We have multiple outfit swaps, appropriate with a story. At the start, everyone's wearing casual, even festive pink outfits. We then transition into like this tavern where everyone's trying to blend in and gather information. And then we have the final fight where everyone's wearing the remains of like other crew's outfits and it's beautiful and it has so much meaning behind it. And it just looks cool, okay? Even if we just stop there, it's just cool. It's just cool. The animation in this movie is strong. The dynamic camera angles, especially. Like Zed is fighting and the camera starts to rotate and you're like, oh, and just absolute beautiful. Like, look at this beautiful colors. I think this is the first, maybe the second, and maybe the third, depending on the leeway that you want to give. But I think this is one of the first movies where the characters look good. Like, not the main characters even, but the side characters look so good. The side characters in Film Z feel like they belong in the canon. Zeph looks a little bit goofy, but on the good side, especially with that cannon arm. Just imagine a fight between him and Frankie. That would have been cool. Ein is so well designed. I love the scars. It implies so much history there. And the ninja guy. He's okay, whatever, who cares. There's a lot of weird bits in this movie that I don't really know where to put, so I'm gonna say them here. First off, we have purple atomic bombs. The world government just has these laying around, I guess. Just roll with it, because everyone knows their thing. Two, Zed is picking a fight with Kizaru, and I think that's cool. We barely get to see him, so I'll take whatever I can get. And uh, also, I think it's a weird mashup, but Zed has this whole anti-devil fruit arm, and you kind of want to see how it works. Did he ever get Kizaru? I don't think so, but that's fine. Ayn has the ability to de-age people, so can she hit someone like three times and then they're just gone forever? If she hit Brooke enough times, would he turn back into a human? How would that affect his fruit ability? Assuming they don't touch seawater or get hit or anything, would they technically be immortal? There are a couple of fights in this movie. The crew loses multiple times and going into the third fight, Luffy is pissed and uses Conker's hockey. I love that we've gotten far enough into the story where we see it being used and it surprised me. It is just done once and it's used to interrogate the Marines and it's so cool, it's all I needed to see. There are apparently volcanoes that when set off with a conveniently timed purple atomic bomb will destroy pretty much everything. People apparently know them as this old wives tale and I think that's neat. I could see it being occasionally mentioned as like a one-off thing that's never talked about again because well it's not relevant unless it is relevant. Because frankly it wouldn't matter unless we are planning on using atomic bombs on those places. The final fight is so raw. We go from power-ups and using the arms to a very realistic hand-to-hand -hand combat where it's just brawling. And that's it. It's raw. And everyone else is watching. <clears throat> also, can we talk about Kuzan? Nobody told me about Kuzan. Really quick, I don't know if this was in the anime. I didn't watch every single episode of the anime. I only read the manga and this was not in the manga. So we know that Aokiji and Akainu had this duel and we see the aftermath of that in the form of Punk Hazard. In that fight, there is a lot of implied violence, but nothing is concrete. And then in this movie, just out of nowhere, is like, like look at him. Look at Kuzan. <laughs> That's Kuzan. Look at what happened to this man. He steps out of the bath and he's, he's missing a leg. And I didn't know he was missing a leg. I didn't know the fight was that bad. I really enjoyed the villains in this movie, especially Zed. He used to be a part of the Marines, and so a big part of what makes him so interesting is how Kizaru and now Kuzan both are after him and how they both act towards him in very different ways. Depending on your allegiance to the world government or piracy or your sense of justice, Zed gains a different reaction towards them. 
even his own crew, who are former Marines, who chose to stay with him, yet, too, aren't entirely convinced that he is a positive role model anymore. And in that regard, he's a very sympathetic villain. His family is gone, killed by pirates. His crew, gone, killed by pirates. His trust in the government, gone, killed by pirates. He had a lot of accomplishments, but in this movie, we get to see not a lot of victory for this guy. The pirate in question that killed everything he loved was done by a warlord, and while it didn't specify who it was, I want to say it's either Moria or Crocodile, just because I don't really see anyone else doing it. But just how tragic of a character moment is it for Zed to lose everyone around him and to have his one trust in justice be stripped away from him too by pardoning the warlord. Zed feels almost broken by the world around him, spiraling into a destructive force in which he's hoping to destroy the flow of the Grand Line, hoping to destroy the entrance and the surroundings and the aftermath of these places being gone and having these places erupt. I wonder if Zed deep down knows that this is destructive enough to kill everyone, innocent civilians, but also deep down the government which itself rejected helping him. It's what I like about Ayn as well. Like, she used to be a part of the Marines and she joined Zed, though, like with Zed, there is a certain layer of uncertainty to her actions. She's loyal to Zed plans, but also kind of not. There's, there's like a worry there. And I like how it's not really resolved. Everyone who picks up on it has these moments and comments on it. Zed himself comments on her stance. Zoro notices it while fighting her. Kuzan addresses that uncertainty at the very end. Story-wise, we get a good opportunity to create mix-ups as Ayn uses her ability to change the crew and then the crew are left to their own devices. It gives us an opportunity to explore a new location in hopes of getting answers and with that gives us really interesting pairings. Nami and Robin are working together and that's cool, we don't see that pairing often. And even the more expected pairings feel new because we got Kuzan in this movie of all people. Kuzan specifically adds an interesting twist into the story because we don't really know much of what Kuzan is doing. And so seeing Kuzan drop by, give a helping hand to the crew, and even help random residents whenever Z starts causing mayhem really makes Kuzan feel like he's trying to clean up the mess of someone he looked up to, sticking around to see the end of Zed's story. This movie feels very different to a lot of other movies and endings to One Piece. The crew eventually finds Zed and has a fight ending with Luffy defeating Zed before eventually being surrounded by the world government. And for a brief moment, it turns into something stoic. Throughout this entire movie, Zed's views are constantly being challenged by his peers, by the people he looks up to, by the people against him. Near the end, he's trying to understand what he's really doing, what his purpose really serves, even what his final fight with Luffy was even about. His views on piracy are challenged, his views on justice are challenged, and in the end, his views aren't just wavering, they're gone. So there's a bit of awe in seeing someone who's been betrayed by the whole world still trying to pick up the pieces and do what they think is just when their whole world was flipped upside down. And it's here where not only the Straw Hats but also Kuzan gives Zed a moment to face the music in an almost aspirational sense. Zed used to be a part of the Marines, he used to be one of the people very close to being at the very top, and similar to that, Kuzan admired and respects Zed enough to give him that moment and ensure the safety of his crew members. Regardless of being a dead man, he stood his ground for what he thought was right, and That's the coolest thing in the whole damn world. That is such a different through line than a lot of the arcs in One Piece, and I really appreciate that in this movie. It feels like it could be in line with a lot of the canon stuff, but then also has like a very interesting route that it goes off to. And I like that. It feels very different and very similar at the same time. 